Namaskar. This is Nil Ashok and welcome back to Introduction to Indian Calendar. In this module, we are going to make ourselves familiar with the movements or motions of the earth, of the moon, and of the sun. Now, there are multiple motions for each of these objects. We are not going to look at each one of them. We are only going to discuss those motions which are relevant for the Indian calendar. What you see here is this celestial clock setup. We have Earth at the center, inclined at an angle. And you can see the Earth's axis. Of course, it's an imaginary line going through the center of the Earth. Then we have the orbit of the moon and moon here going around the Earth. The next thing we have is the orbit of the sun, this yellow circle. This is the ecliptic. This is the the reference frame for anything in astronomy, okay? The, the sun's path around the earth as seen from the earth is the reference frame for everything that we do in astronomy, not just limited to the calendar. And here is our sun. Right now, if you, notice that the earth the moon and the sun they are in once they are in one straight line this point here happens to be the point of vernal equinox that is same as spring equinox in modern calendar in gregorian calendar that would correspond to say 22nd 23rd of march There are three other similar points mentioned here. The SS refers to summer solstice that corresponds to 21st June in the Gregorian calendar. AE refers to autumnal equinox or the fall equinox, and that corresponds to about 20th, 2-0 September in a Gregorian calendar. And finally, the point of winter solstice that corresponds to 21st, 22nd December in Gregorian calendar. Notice the Earth's axis is inclined at an angle, but inclined with respect to what? The answer is it's inclined with respect to the plane of the ecliptic, which is the same as the path of the sun around the earth as seen from the earth. So if you want to see what that inclination that I'm referring to of the, of the earth's axis, for a second, I'm going to highlight this celestial equator. That will tell you how the earth is actually inclined at an angle with respect to the, the plane of the ecliptic, okay? For simplicity, I'm going to remove that so that the picture remains clean and clear. I am going to introduce Earth's orbit. Now we will do one round of this demonstration until the Earth completes one rotation in its orbit. You can also think of this as sun completing one rotation around its orbit as seen from the earth, it doesn't matter. In fact, that is the very point to show you that these are relative motions and we must become very comfortable with this language of earth going around the sun or sun going around the earth interchangeably without causing any confusion internally, okay? For any one of us, each, each one of us. So for this first round, what I would ask you to focus on is to imagine, okay, remember, imagine, okay?
okay that sun is steady as if it's not moving anywhere although once i start the demo you will see the whole thing is slightly moving and it is moving for a reason but imagine that sun is not moving and just focus on the path of the earth the moment of the earth as it goes around the sun in reality everything would be moving okay the moon would be going around the earth the earth would be going around the sun and the sun would be going around the earth okay that's the fun guys okay so let's begin imagine the sun is steady it's not moving at all and it is the earth that is going around the sun. It's perfectly okay if you also imagine that while this is happening, the moon is going around the sun. And that's perfectly fine because that's indeed what is happening to the moon. Again, try to imagine sun is at the center, not moving as if it is steady and it is the earth that is going around the sun. Okay, what just happened is that we went through a period of one solar year, approximately 365 days. All right, now next time or this round, I want you to focus on the earth as if earth is not moving, earth is at the center and fixed. And it is the sun that is going around the earth into that yellow circle, that yellow orbit that is the ecliptic, okay? Can we do that? Let's do it. So imagine earth is fixed is at the center as if it is not moving and it is the sun that is going around the earth as it goes around the earth notice that sun started from the point of vernal equinox then it passed through the point of summer solstice now it is passing through the point of autumnal equinox or the fall equinox autumnal equinox is same as fall equinox now it is ready to cross the point of winter solstice. And now it's going to complete one full circle that is equal to approximately 365 days. And that is equal to one solar year. Now I'm going to remove the Earth's orbit to again keep the picture very, very clean. And let's do it one more time. So imagine Earth to be fixed at the center. And it is the sun that is going around the Earth. For a solar year in Indian calendar, the day of vernal equinox is the first day of the year. And therefore, when the next vernal equinox day arrives new solar year begins in the indian calendar okay so indian calendar speak what you see right now is the first day of the solar year now it so happens again remember this is a demonstration piece the moon is also in the same line as earth and the sun and so this day is the day of Amavasya or the new moon day. Now, in the previous module, we defined the lunar month or lunar Amanta month as the one that begins with the day of Amavasya and it ends with the next Amavasya. Okay. Now remember, for Amavasya to occur, it's not enough that the moon makes a complete circle and comes back to this point. This is because by the time moon comes back to this point after completing one circle, the sun would have moved through some distance. 
And remember, for a Amavasya day to occur, we need sun, we need sun, the moon, and the earth in the same line with the moon in between the sun and the earth. Okay. So let's do one more round of simply sun going around the earth. And if you can watch some additional moments of the moon, that's fine. See what you can find peculiar about it. If not, we are going to run another simulation. So let's focus on sun's movement around the earth. Imagine earth to be fixed stationary, and it is the sun that is going around the earth completing one circle in approximately 365 days, and that is equal to one solar year. While this is happening, while sun is going around the earth, moon is also going around the earth at a much faster pace in comparison to the sun. And we will do our next demonstration by focusing on the motion of the moon. Okay, so let's reset. All right, so we understood the day of Amavasya. On that day, the sun, the moon and the earth are along the same line and moon is between the sun and the earth. Now we are going to focus on the motion of the moon. This is how I'm going to do it. Instead of giving a regular simulation, instead of showing you a regular simulation, I'm going to use the stepwise function for approximately one single tithi, one single day, of the moon that's that you can call lunar day or a lunar tithi all right so let's begin so when i do plus one moon has gone through a certain distance and same thing is actually happened to the sun it's just not obvious but please count the days of the moon with me it's very important so we just already counted one. Now, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and some distance, okay? So, but I'm going to stop at 27 to show you that in about 27 days, moon completes one circle. In fact, it's 27 days and some more time that it that, that is required for a moon to complete one circle, okay? So moon would be right here where it started before in about 27 days. However, as I said, this day won't be the day of Amavasya as it was 27 days ago. Why is that? Because during this time, sun has already moved through certain distance. And for us to have Amavasya day, what we need is these three celestial bodies, sun, moon, and the earth, along the same line with moon in between. So we will need to go additional two days and some more time. So we counted 27, so now 28, 29. And if I do one more, it might go further. Well, this is perfect, okay, so 30. Okay, just for a visual look, that's 30. And as I said, it's close to 30. Is between 29 and 30. So now we have the next Amavasya. What we just did about 30 days of moon's journey is we went through one lunar month from Amavasya 
to Amavasya. Okay, now we will do the same thing again. And uh, let's do one more time through step change. So one, <clears throat> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Remember, this is where approximately we had the last Amavasya, but now we have to go find next Amavasya. So 28, 29, 30. This is our Amavasya number three, and we completed two lunar months. So notice what is happening. To get to Amavasya, the moon has to travel through additional two and a half days to arrive at a point which is between the earth and the sun. Why is that? Because during this particular time, a time period of approximately 30 days, the sun has moved through certain distance. And so moon has to do this additional catching up to be in same phase, okay, with respect to the earth. So that's the second month. Now I'm going to use this demo tab and we will stop approximately around the Amasya day to count the rotations of the moon because I want to emphasize another important point. Okay, so we had so far two lunar months. So let's begin. I will stop when the next Amavasya comes. So this is like a three, four, five. So five lunar months are gone. six lunar months, seven lunar months, eight lunar months, nine lunar months, 10 lunar months, 11 lunar months, 12 lunar months, and I have ability to bring back the moon here. Okay, so the 12 lunar months are gone. So here, for example, and notice the sun has not completed one full cycle yet. So let's count these days. Okay, so as I said, the solar year is made up of approximately 365 days. As far as the lunar year goes, we completed the 12 lunations, okay? The 12 cycles of the moon, the, those are called lunations. So we have already had 12 months of the moon. That is like a lunar year, just like 12 months of the sun would be solar year. But there is a gap between the lunar year and the solar year. Let's find out how much it is, okay? So let's count the days. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so there is a gap of eleven days between the lunar year and the solar year, which is to say between the twelve solar months and the twelve lunar months, which is defined based on twelve complete rotations of the moon from Amavasya to Amavasya, which is to say as seen from the earth, okay? From same one phase to the next phase. This 11 days, actual number is 10.88, but another thing that a student of astronomy or Indian calendar must learn is to be very comfortable with practical approximations. So 
if somebody says there is a gap of about 10 days or about 11 days between the lunar year and solar year, the person is making a correct statement. The actual number is 10.88. And again, that's the average number. So it doesn't help much to always say 10.88. So if you say there is a gap of about 10 to 11 days between the lunar year and between the solar year, that is a perfect statement that is more practical and more useful statement. All right, so what did we look at? We looked at the motion of the earth around the sun. We looked at the motion of the sun around the earth. We recognized and acknowledged that one has to be comfortable discussing or talking about sun going around the earth or earth going around the sun while always remembering exa exactly who is going around who, but not to allow ourselves to be, to, confuse, to be confused with this. We have to make a promise to ourselves that we will not confuse ourselves with who is going around who, or rather remain very comfortable, doesn't matter what language is used. And we have to make a promise to our uh, fellow classmates <laughs> and to a teacher, and of course the teacher has to make to a student that he or she will not confuse the rest of the classmates. It's very basic guys, but it's very important that you get this right, right from the beginning. Then we also looked at two types of lunar months. When we started from the point of Amavasya, but a specific point of the vernal equinox, when moon completed one round and came to the same point, which is to say like this, okay? So this is one round and here, and I can always bring it back, okay? Now it took 27 days. This is called the sidereal lunar month. Why sidereal? Sidereal refers to the star, the background star, okay? And we haven't discussed that yet. So to complete one circle from the same star reference point to the same star again, moon takes about 27 days. That's why it's called a sidereal lunar month. However, for the moon to come in the same phase, as where it started, which was Amavasya, back to Amavasya, it takes additional two and a half days, okay, close to some sometime bit somewhere between 29 and 30 days. And that is called the synodic lunar month, okay, synodic lunar month, which is what most of us refer to Amavasya to Amavasya or full moon to full moon. We are going to stick with Amavasya to Amavasya. Okay, so that is why we have two numbers for the lunar month. One is 27 days. Another one is between 29 and 30 days. One more thing we will do, which is to show you how does the alignment for the full moon looks like. Okay, so we are letting moon go through the, its rotation and I stopped it <clears throat> when now moon, earth, and the sun are along the same line. However, as shown in this demo, the earth is between the moon and the sun. This is the full moon day. One more thing. Now we are going to add the background reference frame of nakshatras. Let's go back to the metaphor of the wall clock and its comparison with this celestial clock. The background reference frame in a wall clock is divided into what? 12 parts first, corresponding to 12 hours, and then 60 parts corresponding to 60 minutes. In a similar fashion, we can take this circle, the ecliptic, the orbit of the sun, 
Again, it's a circle, so therefore 360 degrees. We can divide this equally into 12 parts, and that will correspond to the 12 solar months, beginning with the day of vernal equinox. It can also be divided and is indeed divided in the Indian calendar system into 27 equal size parts. Why 27? Some of you might have some inkling now, why 27? Remember, it took the moon about 27 days to start from its reference point and complete one rotation with respect to the background star. And the background star I was referring to is essentially this reference system of nakshatras. That's why 27 nakshatras. Now, it so happens that the moon, the sun, the earth, and also most of the planets of the solar system. So Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. They are more or less in the same plane as this plane of the ecliptic, that is the orbit of the sun as seen from the Earth. And therefore, something elegant comes out, which is what? This background reference system of nakshatra can be used not only to track the position of the moon or the position of the sun, but we can use the same nakshatra system to track the position of all other planets. And that is exactly what is done in the Indian calendar system. 